of uh, Select Board Meeting to Order for June 7, 2022. Please join me for Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and the liberty and justice for all. Board for plan hearing at 5:35. So we have a few minutes before that. Are you here for national grid? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, Chris, do you have anything that would take approximately four or five minutes? Yep. All right. Uh, first one. Uh, you would ask me to give an update what the additional cost would be for our municipal solid waste shipping. Yes. Um, versus going to community equal power to the McNamara transfer station. Under community equal power, we are paying $81.60 per ton. McNamara, we're paying $94 a ton. At an average of 1,260 tons per year, it's an additional $15,624. And that's at this year's price. Right. It's next year's price. So how is that, is that budget, that's not really not budgeted into our... I was able to budget in because I kept the fee in just before I finalized my budget, so I was able to factor it in. Um, at some point, we're going to have to look at the price of the bags because with the costs that are going up at this rate, we're probably going to have to raise the cost of the bags from one dollar for the 15 gallon and two dollars for the 33 gallon bag. Be interesting too to see how many bags for the blue bag that we actually go through a purchase a year to see how many people are actually you know buying the extra bag or using extra bags versus mm -hmm. you know, interesting to see I guess. Okay. Uh, the other item I'd like to talk to the board about is the Charter Day Fishing Derby. Uh, normally, the charter day had someone who would donate the funds for stocking the pond. Uh, I would like to ask the select board to sponsor it this year because that person is unable to sponsor it. And seeing how it's really for the kids and for our residents, I believe it's something that the board should do to get back to the community. How much is it? $415. I think it's worthwhile for us to spend $415 just to stock the pond for, you know, for kids and the enjoyment that people look forward to doing it. Uh, anybody else have uh, concerns with it? No. It's a great idea. Uh, do, you know, do you need a vote on that? I just like permission from the board to be able to write the check. Yeah. I don't have any concerns. You, no. No. Make a motion. Uh, no, you don't. You don't have to make a motion. I don't need a motion. Sounds like no bad. Everybody yeah. else. Okay. Yeah. Go for it. Okay. Okay. Chris, are you gonna? Uh, I don't think I can. No, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, understandable. All right. And the last item to get you in for one minute is we have scheduled John Larue to come in on July 14th the playground equipment at the Grand Park. July 14th? July 14th. Is that when Chris will let us know how much uh, mulch and everything? Because I don't know if Jeremy's going to have that machine by then, right? He will not have that yeah. machine. Well, he may have a machine, but yeah. he may not have the implements. Okay. Okay. Uh, the tractor we're expecting, hopefully, to get sometime in July. However, all the implements that he ordered mm -hmm. may not get in until late October, November. Wow. So, okay. you know, all depends what it comes with. You can 
get the bucket, maybe he can do some work with it, but outside of that, we'll have to wait. Okay. And does he need those implements in order to put the mulch at the park for the kids, or no? It'll make it a little bit easier than hand shoveling it. Okay. Well, if he doesn't have the the parts for the equipment, the extensions and stuff, maybe we can kind of do a community day type thing or something if we're going to end up spreading additional mulch. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and do something like we'll probably get this, maybe the scouts could help. Sure, the scouts community community service. service. Yeah, I'm sure we can, I'm sure we could definitely get some residents to, to help do it as well. All right, well, with that said, it's uh, 5.36, so we have a public hearing with uh, National Grid. So I'd like to call the hearing to order. Um, the Slack Board will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, June 7th, 2022 at 5.30 p.m. at the Senior Center building located at 10 B West State Street, Grammy, Mass. To grant permission to Massachusetts Electric Company, DBA National Grid, to locate poles, wires, and fixtures, including the necessary sustaining and protecting fixtures along and across the following public ways. So at 5.30 p.m., um, Chigley Street National Grid to install one SO mid-span pole 67 to 75 with anchor on Chigley Street, beginning at a point approximately 1,104 feet south of the center line of the intersection of Carver Street between pole 67-50 and pole 68. Wherefore, it prays that after due notice and hearing as provided by law, it can be granted a location for and permission to erect and maintain poles and wires together with such sustaining and protecting fixtures as it may find necessary said poles to be erected substantially in accordance with the plans filed herewith marked. Also for permission to lay and maintain underground laterals, cables, and wires in, and in the above or intersecting public ways for the purpose of making connections which with such poles and buildings as each of said petitioners may desire for distributing purposes. Your petitioner agrees to reserve space for one cross arm at a suitable point on each of said poles for the fire, police, telephone, and telegraph signal wires belonging to the municipality and used by it exclusively for municipal purposes. Copies of proposed plans, Chickby-3054895, Grammy Mass, are available in the Board of Selectmen's Office, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., Monday through Thursday, 9 a.m. to 12 noon on Friday, located at 10 B West State Street, Senior Center Building, second floor. Granby Select Board, Glenn N. Sexton, Crystal L. Dufresne, and Richard K. Ballou. Ballier. Ballier. Thank you. It doesn't look like that, but it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, you are here for National Grid. This is, uh, if you can just maybe come up to the next row here and uh, just let us know who you are. Yeah, I'm a designer. Um, I designed this job for the new uh, that's going to go in for uh, the service going across the street for 331 Street House. Um, and they're needed a pretty power to their for asking for this new that's going to go to to uh, accommodate for the service going so the, the pole is on their property? So they're going to have their own service pole, but in order to, for us to accommodate for the service across the street, we need to add a new mid span pole, like right going straight um, right across. There's um, two adjacent poles, but they're further away from where they could be fed from. Okay. So we just got to move a, a, an additional pole so that um, just so the line's closer? Yeah. Um, Right there, if you look at it, Mr. Chair. Who just asked him to give his name for the record? Oh, I'm sorry, but yes, your name. Uh, my name is Donald Sager. I'm with the National Thank you. Yes. Any 
and this is for um, this new mid span pole is going alongside um, the property lines of 331. see anybody that has from the audience would have any questions that no one's here um, so at this point we can close the uh, public part of the meeting and we'll uh, deliberate amongst ourselves uh, does anybody have any concerns or questions in regards to uh, the placement of the poll is that around uh, near the bend you there's a guy, I can't there's a guy, uh, the bar is standing nearby. Okay, so it's further north up the street up there. So you're across from this. On your diagram is zero Carver Street. Yeah, that sounds very Carver Street. Okay. So there, yeah. Just so we can get placement, so it would be right across the right. street. Well, I think it's that black it's thing. The, the, new, the new little lots that are right there. Mm -hmm. There's like three or four new lots, right? Yeah, when chicken as you come yeah. around the band there. Yes. Yeah. There's another house going behind uh, like where it's at right now, three thirty one, there's another house um at that well, it's behind it. So I think so that this house and the house going further back on uh, behind three thirty one. I'm sure you don't think it's feeding behind three thirty one. There's gonna be another house that's gonna get it, so um Okay. Right yeah. Further out, look on the okay. I know where you're at. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I don't have any issues with no. it. No. I, I don't either. So. I'd like to make a motion to accept the new poll in between 67-75. No, I'm sorry. It's going to be 67 50 and 68. 68. So that it would become the poll 67 75. Is there a second? I'll second it. Is there any further discussion? No. no. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. You're all set. Thank you. Thank you. Do you need a, does he need a copy of the, or just send it to the National Group? It'll, it'll give me a copy. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, we shouldn't have closed it on you. It's okay. I can certainly open it. participation. I don't see anybody here. Anybody receive a letter or anything for anybody? Nothing. Okay. All right. Then we'll move right along to uh, town this year. Well, I just want to report that the invitation for bids for the tree removal project at Dufresne's Park has been advertised. We did get a list of uh, vendors from John Edwards. And I think that was around two dozen vendors that we sent the invitation out specifically. And I don't cap got an email today about another company that was interested in getting it. So the ad is out. Okay. Uh, Mr. Edwards met with uh, interested vendors last Friday, June 3rd, at the park to go over the site and stuff. So. Um, it's moving forward and hopefully we'll get a good response and opening the bids uh, later on this month. What's this target goal? 
this winter, I know, but is it January or before it? Or? When the ground freezes. Just, okay. That's that's the key part. Yeah. So that he doesn't tear, they don't tear up the grass and stuff. So. Uh, hopefully we won't have a warm winter. Yeah. Hopefully it'll freeze quick. And, uh, well, $5 a gallon for oil, I think we might want to. But that's the only problem. If we do have a warm winter, it may not get done until March, okay. February, March. Yeah. Okay. February, March. Okay. Um, who benefits from the uh, timber removal? Is it from the ad hoc committee or? Okay. Comes to the town agreement. Okay. And you have in front of you a memo that I received from the superintendent of schools regarding the results of the regionalization interest survey. And looking at it, looks like they sent that out to they got responses from seven districts. Uh, the most that I can gather from this is there are a couple districts that would look at possibly uh, regionalization only up to shared services, not to actually regionalize right. with their district. So I believe at some point the board should schedule a meeting, a joint meeting with the finance committee school committee to discuss this topic and how we're going to proceed forward. Okay. We can look at that. Uh, I don't know how much the school could be is meeting during the summer, but we could, um, could see and then go from there. Mm -hmm. Where are we looking? June, July? Well, that would, that would be up to the board to try and put a date together to yeah. see. Okay. I don't know if anybody said anything from the other no. departments. To you. No, so we probably have to, you know, like you've done in the past, is kind of put out some different dates and see when the most people are available to attend. Uh, I know we get into the summer months and vacations. Yeah. Vacations are coming up. Yeah. yeah. So we can look at that. Maybe um, something for us to think about. Um, if you want to do it in July, look at some dates. Uh, that would be put together that were available and then send them out to the finance committee and school committee and kind of get their feedback and see if we can come up with a, a time. Yeah, a I'm, I'm time. With, yeah. yeah. It's way we have sure to do it better, I think we should yeah. start looking June, at June's it. June's going to be kind of tough with everything that's going on and graduate from high school and, yeah. and things. So I think if we look at July, probably the best to we can put together. And, and going on forward with the we are going to have to schedule a joint meeting with the school committee to appoint a person to the vacant seat until the next election. Uh, Mr. Conley is uh, yeah. resigned resign resign. from the position. So now uh, a joint meeting of the selectmen and the school committee is required to nominate and vote on a replacement until the next election right and the school committee did talk about briefly about that at their last meeting um and i think they did have some people that may be interested in in it and there's some people they were going to reach out to uh, each i think some of the committee members had someone that they wanted to reach out to and so we have received actually an email from a resident who was interested Good. in serving on the committee too i Good. saw i saw that <clears throat> so so that's another topic we're going to have to discuss yep. at some point. I think too with the with the school committee, I think probably the sooner the better for them. Uh, so that'll probably be uh, be a priority to try to fill the open seat so they can have a, a five member committee. Make it a little easier on them. So mm -hmm. I don't know how much business they have between you know now and uh, September, but it'll probably be helpful. But <coughs> that's for them. And uh, before I go through the Dufresne rentals, um, the schedule for the board's meetings, uh, with June 20th being Juneteenth day, a holiday, we will be meeting on Tuesday, June 21st, instead of the 20th. 
because Juneteenth is actually June 19th and because it's a Sunday it's celebrated on a Monday and then the meeting after that would fall on July 4th so we will be meeting on July 5th another Tuesday I won't be around for the June that's if 21st on my vacation that's if we decide to meet on Tuesday <laughs> no you're, you're right but you could postpone it a week if you so desire Mr. Bolio just said that he's not available on the 21st. He's gone that week. Do you want to postpone it one week? I'll be out of the state. Yeah, I don't do. Do you want to the 27th? Yes, yeah, so we have the Monday the 27th, and then then you can do the 10th or the 11th. We could do that. Does that work for you, Crystal? Talking yes. about June yeah. 27th, which is a Monday, then. July 11th. Okay, that will work. July 11th. I will be on vacation the week of the 27th, so Miss Leonard can sit in my stead. Okay. All right, so our next. Uh, Two meetings will be June 27th, Monday, June 27th, and then Monday, July 11th for right. our next two meetings. So just so Got it. that people know that we're what we'll, we'll put it on the uh, website. Yep. yep. So okay. that's that's due to the two holidays. That's all, and, and we want to make sure, if possible, that all the board members can be together for the yep. meeting. And that's the so. most important part. Go to your home turf, Porto Beach. Well, beach, she's uh, enjoy yourself. I know you will. Does that mean that we'll still come back on July 18th as our regular Thursday? We'll get Monday? back on your okay. regular schedule. Yes. Thank you. All right. Uh, do frame rentals. We have uh, a pancake breakfast on June 11th, 2022 being put on by the Granby Police Association, arriving 5.30 a.m., departing 12 noon. Uh, we have on June 14th and 15th, GAA baseball program, um, from 5.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m., no liquor, number of people, 50 to 60, Fulbright Pavilion for T-ball, and Coach Pitch Pizza Party. On June 25th, 2022, arriving 11 a.m., departing 7 p.m., a graduation party, no liquor, maximum number of people, 499, for the large pavilion, gazebo, and the large field. For June 25th, 2022, Arriving 2 p.m., departing 9 p.m., a birthday party, no liquor authorized, maximum number of people is 50, and is for the Taylor Street side, pavilion number one, sandy can available only. On August 27, 2022, Friends of the Granby Veterans, arriving 3 p.m., departing 7 p.m., liquor authorized, no, it's a fundraiser for the memorial. Um, and the final one is for September 10th, 2022. Arriving 10 a.m., departing 8 p.m. Liquor not authorized at this time. Maximum number of people, 100. Family reunion, large pavilion and gazebo, large open field. This is what's being rented. And one final topic regarding the memorial. Uh, it's been approved by the planning board, the final plans. Uh, I believe they are planning on starting construction mid to late August. And the first thing they're gonna do is lay the pad and bring in the tank, and then they'll start with the construction of the wall. Nice, awesome, that is awesome. 
and they hope to be complete by Veterans Day of 2022. So. Wow, that'd be good. good. That'd be great if it was definitely completed by Veterans Day. You know, there's, there's been too talk and discussion about that and ceremonies and things like that about it. So. Yes. Okay. All right. That's all I have. All right. Chris, when, for the 725, when you said Santa Can available, we don't have to supply that to them. They're having their own, right? There's a Santa Can present on site. Yeah, for And that's all they will use for the bathroom. We okay. will not open the uh, pavilion for them. Okay. No, and the main reason is that we actually already have the large being yeah. used and yeah. I just make sure that they know that they're only allowed to use Santa Can. Right. To use the bathroom. Um, else else Thank you. There's no correspondence besides the letter. Besides the, uh, okay. nothing note for me. Yeah, I still got some more bankruptcy documents from Community Equal Powers yes. and a couple of uh, correspondences from uh, Comcast regarding some uh, programming changes. Speaking of Comcast, have you received any like complaints about people as far as like the the service as far as uh, internet things like that? I would not receive those complaints. Yeah. That would go in front of the Cable Advisory Committee. But I have not received Because I've seen, I, you know, Facebook goes sometimes. I've seen some things. And I've actually noticed the little discrepancy sometimes in the um, um, the Internet. You know, it seems like, you know, get kicked off it or certain things. Are more so now than I've noticed in the past. So that might be um, something to, to talk to them about. Me or the cable advisory committee? The cable advisory, advisory. committee. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, I said the same thing, but I, but I kind of take a little grain of salt in anything I read on Facebook. Well, I, I read it on Facebook. Someone also sent me an email about it too. I mean, that, you know, Chris just mentioned Comcast for your mind. Yeah. And I know we've had I some, like, you know, a lot more people use um, the Wi Fi for, for different things in houses now, especially with all those smart TVs and all that stuff where I think it's, I don't know if it's more of a demand or whatever it be. A lot of people are doing remote. Yeah. Too. Yep. Yep. So it's, it's just, you know, but I, I think people get a little frustrated when they're paying for a service and they're not getting the service they're paying for, so, which is understandable. Have you noticed anything in your house? Because I have. I, I have. That's why I kind of, yeah, I okay. noticed like in, like most of our TVs now are all smart TVs. Yeah. Mine too. So there's just no more really cable hookups, you know, yeah, it's through the Wi-Fi, so. I must be one of the lucky ones because we yeah. don't have the issue. Once in a while I get the issue too, but usually if I um, unplug the um, adapter we have and then plug it back in from the Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi, it usually will restart or so, reboot. Yeah, I have They can call that Comcast too and Comcast will walk them through troubleshooting. Um, yeah, is Comcast our only internet carrier in Granby? Yes. Okay. Well, we have the, the old uh, Granby, tel Granby telephone. Right. Yeah. But not many people have subscribed to that. No. Uh, but it, it, it's something to think about. And like I said, if you know, if people shouldn't be have to reboot their system and stuff like that. Or maybe they do. I don't know. I don't know a lot about technology. I'm not going to pretend I do. So, <laughs> But I know it's, you know, I just want to recognize that people that have concerns about it. And, you know, if there's something that we could do from our seat here and reach out to uh, the advisory committee to them. I think that's something we could do. Is that on our website, the advisory committee? In there? I'll check. Sure. Right. That way the citizens could probably uh, address their complaints easier that way than on Facebook. Yep. Is there a way to get another carrier or do we have a contract with this co specific company? No, Comcast is the... the Comcast negotiated with yeah. Granby Tell to be able to use their poles. Okay. Yeah. So that's the issue you run into is all the telephone poles in town are owned by Granby Telephone and Telegraph. Okay. 
And so it took a while for Comcast to negotiate being able to use the polls. And so I don't know if they're going to allow anybody else to come in yeah. to be able to use it. Yeah. And I don't know really who else is out there for... Well, you got Verizon. Yeah. yeah. No, you've got Verizon, you've got uh, Spectrum. Uh, Charter, Charter. you've got Charter. Uh, Spectrum, you know. Those are not there. But, you know how it goes, each area has their own designated things. For right, and I, and I don't know if uh, Comcast has exclusive rights yeah. to the town of Granby either. So right. That would be an FCC question. Right. That's up from the army. Me too. All right, let's move on to something easier. The Charter Day Fishing Derby. Is that what you were doing? As I say, was that what you were talking about before? Yes. Okay. That was. All right. And we already did the initial solid waste fees. Look at that. Moving right along. All right. So, new business. Uh, we have the departmental reports. So, we get a chance to review them. Yes. Do you have any questions, comments, concerns? Um, on the week of 5 7 from building maintenance. Um, Mr. Carrier has mentioned that we need to have signs saying bring in and bring out trash. They're leaving it everywhere um, on the parks. When I drove in there on Monday to meet Finelli's for the ride company, there is two big trash um, bags right next to the, um, the dumpster. So I don't know if that was a party that someone had or if that's something that somebody dumped there, but there's trash everywhere and they keep putting poop bags into the um, shed that's there because the handle has like an opening where there's a little bit of a space. This is only locked by a padlock. So it's locked by a master lock. And so there's a little opening and people are shoving their poop bags into that opening yeah. in the shed. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Jeremy uh, saw some signs that they have that broke for the rebook. Yep. Um, he's not happy, and he's looking into them to see how much they are and whatnot. And as far as the bags that were there, that she also sent me a picture of, um, those were all um, alcohol um, cans, apparently. And he saw that somebody um, had pushed uh, three um, speaking tables together and looked like they had a party there, and no one had rented mm -hmm. this weekend. So I actually yeah. speak to a police officer that the police need to do a couple more rounds because every week I do send them everything so they know what's, when it's rented and when it's not. And another thing that happened that uh, Jeremy, I don't know if you can do it or not, that when he went today too, uh, it looked like uh, somebody, again, had used the smaller uh, pavilions and had um, started, you know, those work things that started Fire, the, the chimneys. Or whatever. The chimneys. The chimneys, they actually burnt the big table with it. Yeah. Um, yeah, people are very really right. Yeah. So we definitely need more of a piece of park police going through there. Yeah. I know a lot of the state parks have the carry in, carry out signs too. Yes. <coughs> and um, I'm going to be calling and when I write, send them stuff, um, we are. Frank, I tell them that, it's carrying carry out. Mm. We did, we pressed the sign issue before, and I think it's it's a problem with vandals. Oh, ripping them down, especially at Brown Ellison Park, I know. They're ripping the signs down there a lot. Okay. It, 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 yeah. Right, so I think, I think you, you talk about these uh, particular things that just happened. I don't think a sign would have made a difference. So when, um, I think people, most people will re realize that if they're bringing stuff in, that's what they're bringing out. And like you said, it's the rentals and stuff like that. As far as the uh, the animal waste, I mean, that's, can we board that up? Can we yeah, we're going to have to do something with things. Just put out, you know, board it up so that people can't, again, just can't believe people are doing that. So They put it inside the grills. They put it wherever yeah, they, they feel like putting it. Inside the grills. Yeah. They're off. But, right, at least, you know, if it's on a grill, it's outside. It's not stuck inside somewhere where it's going to eventually have a smell. Yeah. Well, I'm not, I'm not saying it's right by all means, but I'm just saying it's, yeah, you know, to, to fix the hole in the building so it doesn't continue. 
I believe we addressed the signs too about no trespassing after hours too. We did. We talked about yeah, that. And yeah, and that yes. gives the police more of authority. If you yeah. So we can always talk down the road to maybe putting the the cameras in there as well. If it can, you know, if you have things like that continue. I mean, especially if there's damaging. Property. Damaging the, the picnic table and stuff like that. Now it becomes, you know, uh, a costly expense for the town. Uh, something to look at. Let's see if it's feasible. To it do something like that, but it's uh, to worry about the cost. Mm -hmm. the, the cost problem with the cameras. Well, a lot of people. You're going to need a lot of cameras. I'm all for cameras. Don't get me wrong, but no. But a lot of people have like they have the uh, like those trail cameras. Inexpensive, uh, like we put up in certain areas. My thing is that you know, if we're going to put them up where you know, the the, the pick the tables and things like that, or where people are gathering, uh, obviously, you can't cover the whole entire park, but at least we have where people are gathering and don't think they should be doing so. Get put up something to think about. I'm not yeah. saying we need to make a decision today or talk about it, but just something for the future to think about. So, like I said, I know those trail cams are kind of inexpensive so maybe that's something we can look at putting up there just a thought all right anything else regards to the departmental reports um chief o'grady went to the media and the frontline officers um training and I would just was wondering um, which he isn't actually here today to ask but I was just wondering what the social media um, ideas that he came up with from there because I know social media is a big issue and a big problem but um, he's not here to ask that tonight mm -hmm. and then someone locked themselves out of their house and I noticed it said the lockbox program I've never heard of that so I didn't know what that was so the lockbox program is something they have set up for the seniors in town we're actually the police department. Anybody. Is anybody in town? Anybody. Oh, I thought it was just a senior. So I guess anybody in town uh, they actually install a lockbox next to the entrance of their house and they put a key in it. Okay. And then the police department actually can go there and unlock the key and get into the house. We have the code to unlock it. It's a code? It's a code. Okay, it's a code. So they have the code to do that and that's more for, it's designed really for safety. You know, if, if something ever happened, they're able to get yeah. to someone's house without breaking. breaking them down a door or something like that. Yeah. And uh, in case it's some type of emergency, so. Yeah. He usually puts in the report too, and if, when they install them, what they install them too. And it's awesome, I didn't even know yeah. that that was a thing. Yeah, because usually they have it the, uh, when they have the uh, um, salt picnic. Usually, uh, have it there and people could sign up for it too so that's what it was making me think about the, this it was for the seniors but and they advertise that on their website or on facebook i don't know I think that's all I have for the um, departmental reports. All right. Entertain a motion to accept the departmental reports. We'll make a motion to um, accept departmental reports. I'll second it. All right. Is there any further discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Are you opposed? We have maintenance warrants. It's in the blue folder. All right, are these in order? Yes, some more. All right, so am I reading the warrants? So, um, warrant number 0071 um, summary of disbursement am i reading all of that no just okay. the amount the date the amount the date for each one okay 
So we've got we just do the total. Just do the total. Yeah, for, for that warrant. And okay. it's um the date. The date for left hand corner. What okay. what does it state what type of um, warrant it is for payment? Is it a payroll warrant or don't usually state whether it's like a they don't? No, I thought you just know those offhand. All right, so this is again warrant number 0071. Date is um, 5 20 2022, and the amount of $265,712.75. That would be a bill paying warrant. And then just keep going through all of them, no, and then we'll, okay. Yeah. That's the same one. And then we have a payroll warrant number 0072. I think I have to go all the way to the back for that one. In the amount from, sorry, let me put a date on here. May 27th. May 27th. Okay, it says May 24th in the left hand side. That's the date it was printed. Payroll warrants are done the day they are printed. Okay. But it's for the 27th. So May 27th, 2022, and total payroll expenditure is 44,000, sorry, $43,862.44. Then we have the next one, which is warrant number 0073, dated May 27th, 2022. Uh, for the amount of four hundred and twenty-three thousand eight hundred and sixty-two dollars and eighty-six cents, and then the last one is warrant number zero zero seven four, in the amount of four hundred, sorry, dated June third, twenty twenty-two, in the amount of four hundred and seventeen thousand three hundred and seventy-one dollars and eighteen cents. And that is a bill paying warrant, also. Mm -hmm. Is there a motion, or what is that actually your motion, Crystal? Um, I actually had a question because I'm still learning how all of this works. Yeah. So when I was reading through these reports, I acted to try and keep it separate. I dated, uh, titled the warrants. So for, uh, I'll start off with warrant 71. Um, it said Amazon Capital Services. Is that just membership? So is that something that the town subscribes to? That is the school department expenditure, and they okay. buy stuff through Amazon. Okay. Because I was curious if it was a town one or not. Okay. Um, and then chart wells, it says, uh, was for $31,744.57. Is that paid through the ESSER grant? Do you know? So no, that's paid through the school lunch revolving program. Okay because they made lunch free this year and last year for all kids. But they still charge us for the cost of right. their services. Okay. So how can we make that free without getting we any can't. money we, we made it free. They okay, made it free. gotcha. They, they did not have to pay for it. <coughs> gotcha. But we had to pay for the service. And okay. The and then the first student bus amount of $248,246.10, that also is not part of the school budget? Yes, it is. It is, okay. Okay. That's the transportation budget. Okay. And then are all the telephone bills from the different companies for all the different departments, so we all use different ones? There was AT&T, there was Comcast, there was Go Net Speed, there was... Go Net Speed is the old Grand Tell, that's the new company name. Okay. Those are all phone lines for Grandy, the old Grandy Telephone and Telegraph. Comcast is for our internet service at all our various sites and at the school sites. And AT&T is used by the police department okay. for some of their cellular service. And you'll see another one which is Verizon. Yeah. which is for all the uh, town issued cell phones for the various departments. Okay. 
Thank you. That was all I had for 71. Okay. <laughs> for 72, um, it said that one of the things that we were paying on warrant 72 was $7,670.50 for outside details. I wasn't sure what that meant for outside details. Road details. Okay. Yeah. That's for any police officer that sits in direct traffic. And on that particular warrant, it didn't say what department the wages or salaries were coming from, but you just know from the categories as you go down? It's a, what it is, it's a basically a agency fund where what happens is, is we pay the officer for the services. We then bill the company and the company reimburses us and we put it back in that account. Okay. So any, anytime anybody um, does work where um, a police officer needed for traffic, it's actually they're, they're charged for it. The town's not, the town's not paying for it. They're yeah. paying for it, but they're being reimbursed for the, gotcha. the cost. Okay. And then Warren uh, 73, um, it says, um, oh, McNamara solid waste we already talked about. So actually I had a question about that. So when it says solid waste, and then it says MSW tipping fee? Municipal solid waste and it's the cost for us to dispose of our trash. Okay. It's a tipping fee because it gets tipped out of the dumpster. The waste yeah. trucks okay. to their station, so it's called a tipping fee. It's a good question because I asked that many years ago. What is a tipping fee? Yeah. <laughs> and then I was just curious because I just happened to, you know, when I was reading it, uh, go by this. It says People's Bank office rental. We lease something in Hoyo for $2,000. I was just curious what that was. So it was a lease. I don't have to see the bill. I, I, okay. I don't know that one off the top of my head. Okay. Well, there may not be. I mean, people's savings banks. That's in a credit card. That's not a credit card. Yeah, they're, they're in oil. They don't think we're leasing oh, anything. Oh, okay. So when yeah. it says lease, it's, a, um, yeah. it's not a lease of a building or anything. No. People's, People's Bank is actually out of Hoyle. That's yeah. where their home branch is. Oh, wait a minute. Which, which what is that to that? That's the lease for the annex. That's the monthly lease for the annex. Oh, so People's Bank owns that? That's where the landlord's account is. We put it, oh, okay. we mail it directly to their account. Okay. And it's through People's Bank. Okay. All right, so we're not actually paying um, is Mary Jo Vignier right has an account right that she told me that we send it there and it gets automatically deposited, deposited into it okay all right there. okay and then the last one was warrant 74 uh, it said building repairs from Blusky restoration contracts for 2500 and I wasn't sure what they um, had repaired this outside of our building here okay uh, we had our plow truck slide into it over the winter, and that was the deductible we had to pay to fix the siding on the outside, and the insurance company paid for the rest of it. And then I never heard of the school, so I was just curious. It's a children's study home. There's three students that were paying for tuition. That's the school one. I have no idea. Okay. That's I was curious. School. I was like, I've never heard of that. That's a, that's a school bill, and okay. I can't answer that one. And they would probably say that it's confidential information because of the student. Could be. There was a community 911 training. Is that for um, the all calls? No, community 911 is training for our ambulance staff on various uh, CPR courses, uh, children's CPR courses, various certifications that they have. That's a fire department question too, if you really want to. Last one was 550 for Russell Dupre professional negotiation. That is a school department is labor okay. council bill.
Does it? Sorry. <laughs> Can we make a motion? No. Can okay. <laughs> we make a motion now? Sure. All right. I'll make a motion to accept um, all warrants. So warrant number 0071 from May 20th, 2022, and the amount of 265. Do I have to read all that all over again? No. Okay. Yeah, I read that. So warrant uh, 0071, warrant 0072, warrant 0073, and warrant 0074. Is there a second? Second. Is there any further discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Okay. All right. to decide on our liaisons for our departments, police department, fire department, uh, counseling and aging, uh, we have the school committee. Yeah, I forgot that one. What else? Highway, please. And highway. TA building. Should be seven on the highway. The and then Chris, but Chris automatically falls under the chair of the select board. Um, okay, so let's start off with the police department. Would anybody like the police department? I would. You know, I'm in public service and in public safety. I've been a member of the police department, and I wouldn't mind doing both the police and fire department if you were in there. Okay. I'm not, I'm not opposed to that at all. I think it's, I like the idea too, you kind of starting off with the, the fire department and kind of continuing into it. Yeah. I think it's, I think makes sense to me. And um, I think it's a good, as well as the, yeah. uh, the police department too. Any concerns with that, Crystal? Or? No. You sure? No. Okay. All right, so you'll take care of the uh, fire department and the police department? Sure. Right. So I would like to continue with the uh, school committee. Uh, I think we've um, we got a good report going now, and um, I'd like to continue that. I know we're working on some different um, committees with them right now, so I'd like to kind of continue that. Seeing that we're kind of like in the midstream, so I'd like to, yeah. to follow through with that throughout the year. So. Um, I'd be glad to do that with, uh, and I'd have Chris as well. And then we have uh, Counseling on Aging, um, and we have the Highway Department. And buildings. And, and buildings. buildings. So um, if you want, I'll take um, 
Well, let me ask you, what would you like for inside? Um, so we have the highway department, uh, we have council building aging. department, and we have counseling and aging. Um, I don't mind doing um, either one of those. I think it's going to be a great opportunity for all of them. So um, I think highway and building kind of go hand in hand because they use a lot of the same equipment. Um, so to keep the continuity kind of thing. But I can also take counsel on aging. So I don't mind doing three. Um, but I guess you guys know more than me how much work is entailed in this. <laughs> so you tell me. <laughs> you're basically the liaison back and forth to, to okay. the, the, the select board. Okay. Um, you know, some, you could, you know, connect with them, you know, once a week or once every other week, see if they need anything, stop and call them or just see how things are going, kind of checking in with them. And you know, usually if they have anything they want to bring up to the board, usually they'll go through the liaison or you know, they'll contact Chris, and Chris will contact the liaison just to let them know that, you know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then meetings. Um, I would go to their board meetings when I can. No. 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 Okay. No. Okay. Yeah, they, they don't really have any board meetings. Well, the council aging, right? They'll call. They'll ask. They'll ask. Yeah. Okay. Ask. Yeah. okay. Um, yeah. That's okay. all. They, they just, I, like I said, they're more or less their liaison to us. So. Okay. Um, because they, those particular departments. Uh, with the exception of the school committee, follow the select board. Okay. So. It was the last year, the year before we, the year before that we took on, we didn't take on um, the school committee, where we thought it'd be a good idea to have a, a liaison with them. So that's how that happened. All right. So do you have that? And get all that down. Perfect. All right. Moving right along, uh, we have uh, common VIC licenses. We have a common VIC license for Evelyn Hatch, DBA, Breezy Acres, Greenhouse and Garden, 25 Pleasant Street, Granby, uh, for um, June 7th, 2022. And she will be selling food at Charter Days. Can I, can I, oh, no, sorry. Can I, can I amend that a little bit? Yep. The common VIC is good through December 31st. 2022. Okay. Fee is $25 and it's number 22 dash. Should be in the upper oh. one. Yeah. Okay. So say a number, read it. And expires fee. December 31st. Fee, X number of dollars. And that's for her greenhouse. Yeah, so I was just going to say this isn't a charter day one. All right, okay. so can I start over? <laughs> All right, so we'll do number. 22-36 common license for Evelyn Hatch, DBA Breezy Acres Greenhouse and Garden at 25 Pleasant Street, um, dated 6-7-2022, expiring uh, December 31st, 2022, and the fee is $25. Do I just keep going? Then you go the mall. Okay. Yeah. All right, then I have Common Dick License 22-37, Local Burger Incorporated, um, from 57 Woodland Drive, Florence, Mass, 01062, for 6-7-2022, expiring December 31st, 2022. Um, again, $25 fee. Common Vic license number 22-38 for the Blind Guy Incorporated, DBA, uh, 57 Woodland Drive, Florence, Mass, 01062. Again, for June 7th, 2022, expiring on 12-31-2022 with $25 fee. Common Vic license number 22-39, Sunnyside Up Breakfast and Lunch, LLC, 46 Morgan Road, West Springfield, Mass, 
0-1109. And we have June 7th, 2022, expiring on December 31st, 2022, with a fee of $25. We have Common Vic License 22-40, Hearts Heart Concessions, 115 North Street, Granby, Mass, 01033, uh, for June 7th, 2022, expiring December 31st, 2022, for a, in a fee of $25. Common Vic License Number 22-41. Ray Rose Enterprises Incorporated, DBA Bruisers Barbecue Incorporated, 125 College Street in South Hadley, Mass, 01075, for June 7, 2022, expiring on December 31st, 2022. Again, $25 fee. Common Vic License Number 2242, Villa of Lebanon. 575 John Finch Boulevard, South Windsor, Connecticut, for June 7, 2022, expiring December 31st, 2022, $25 fee. And then Poppy's, or sorry, Common Vic number 22-43, Poppy's Fresh Onion Rings, 21 Main Street, Covington, Mass, 01026. Uh, for June 7th, 2022, expiring on December 31st, 2022, for a $25 fee. Oh, these are all separate ones. That's a lot. Never mind. I paper clipped them together. I thought they were all one. All right, so Common Vic License number 22-44, Poppy's Fresh, Old Fashioned Lemonade, 21 Main Street, Covington, Mass, 01026. For June 7th, 2022, expiring December 31st, 2022, for a $25 fee. Common Vic license number 2245, Mark Finelli's Fried Dough, 41 Caspian Way, Fitch, Mass, 01420. For June 7th, 2022, expiring on December 31st, 2022, uh, for a fee of $25. Common Vic license number 22-46 for SNKC Food Vending Mini Donuts, 88 Bemis Street in Chickabee, Mass, 01013 for June 7, 2022, expiring on December 31st, 2022 for a $25 fee. Common Vic license 22-47 for SNKC Food Vending Kettle Corn, 88 Bemis Street, Chickabee, Mass, 01013, June 7th, 2022, expiring on 12-31-22 for a $25 fee. That is all of them. I just want to make that all, all the that will do is for Charter Day. And, and yep. All uh, Kettle Street uh, site only. Not on your routes and have to just be there. I was getting hungry. Yeah. <laughs> well, good food. Okay, so the Evelyn was for Breezy Acres. Okay. And then everything else is charter days. Okay. So I can make, well, you Chris, can make I think we talked about this before. I can make a motion because I don't benefit from this any way, in any way financially. No. So I will make a motion to accept all the common VIX license as stated. Okay, I'll second. Okay. Right. Do you further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. It may take a while here. I know.
to approve and sign the police lieutenant contract. Would the lieutenant be here coming tonight? I don't know. Okay. So I'll make a motion. If you wish. Um, to approve the uh, police lieutenant employment contract. And sign. And sign. Is there a second? I'll second. Any further discussion? Yes, I do actually have some questions. Um, so when I was reading through this, um, it says that the contract shall be uh, for a period commencing August 4th, 2021 and ending June 30th, 2024. So is it the contract? So I guess I'm just, his contract was done last year. Is that what the? No, this fiscal year. This fiscal year. It's okay. prorated for the period of time when he gets appointed. Okay. to uh, the end of the fiscal year for a certain dollar amount. Okay. Then July 1, the salary goes up to another figure yep. for July 22 through June 23. Okay. And then it goes up to another salary figure right. July 23 to June of 24. Okay, what is a Quinville benefit? It was an educational benefit. Okay. So basically just keeping up with his educational requirements? Uh, no, no. no. If he, what it is is a police officer can have an associate's, a bachelor's, or a master's degree. Uh, Based okay. upon the level of education that they get, they get either 15%, 20%, or 25% of their base pay added on for going and being becoming an educated law enforcement officer versus someone who does not have a degree degree in law enforcement. And the coin bill was something that was passed many years ago by the state legislator. And, and the state originally was paid, would pay half of the right. cost of the stipend. Now they no longer fund it in the, in the state government, so it's basically 100% paid by the town. Okay. Um, also in the contract said the police lieutenant will remain in the supervisor on call schedule as it exists with the union sergeants. So I was just curious who the union sergeants were on the force. That is officer Sergeant Marion and Sergeant Richards. Um, I guess one of the other questions I have for this too is I know um, it was suggested by the Finance Committee that we do um, a feasib feasibility study on the different or various departments. So I'm just wondering why we are looking at signing a new contract before we do a feasibility study. Because we have to have a contract with him for him to perform his job. This, this contract agreement. was in negotiations before the Finance Committee made their report. That's how we So the board, the police department always had, or since uh, the retirement of Chief Barry, the police department has a chief, a lieutenant, and two sergeants. When Chief O'Grady was promoted to chief, it vacated the lieutenant's position. All we're doing right now is filling that vacant position as had been uh, working in that command structure, I would say, for the last eight, nine years. 
So okay. we're really filling a vacant position at yes. this point in the command structure. Right. We're not creating a new position, we're just filling a position okay. that became vacant with the promotion of the of chief of Lieutenant Grady to Chief O'Grady. Okay. Is that a question? Um uh -huh. one of the yeah, one of the questions. And then So it says that the police lieutenant shall meet with the chief of police at least twice each year for the purpose of discussing his performance. So is there like a set schedule? And again, Chief O'Grady is not here to talk no, to. No, but or that is that is up. That's in our, his contract. Yeah. But it is all up to the chief. Uh, chief O'Grady okay. is, is a strong chief. Yeah. He uh, controls the operations of the police department. So the chief can dictate if he wants to meet with him more or less. That's what we want in our contract, at least to have a, a, a set uh, standard fuel. Set minimum, right? Right, but yeah. again, the chief could decide whether or not yes. he was to meet with them more or less, but that's what we wanted from from this minimum. board. Minimum. minimum. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you're looking for, a minimum yeah. number of times to meet. So all of this was through negotiations with the board prior to me yes. coming on? Yes. Okay. Negotiated the contract with the lieutenant. Yes. We do it all contracts with the chief, uh, police, the fire chief. And do you know what the IBPO union stands for? The National Brother of the South Okay. We're getting all at once. Former <laughs> <laughs> um, member. So I, and I know I'm only used to my contract as a teacher, but when it says benefits and it says B, um, they get 15 sick days, which understandable. I mean, they work year round, but is there anything in the contract that says that they have to, like say they have consecutive days off that they have to provide a doctor's note, three. note or anything? It three. is three? It is okay. Three. So I didn't read that in here, so I was just curious well, on that. Well, that is the town's policy. Yes. Okay. Yeah. For employment, uh, for employee. Yes, I asked that question. And then, should they call out sick? Is there any um, any clause or anything in here that says that they can't then pick up an overtime shift within 24 hours, like they do on the state police? Like, should I call out today? Could I then potentially pick up a shift today? Or is There's nothing in the contract that states that, as far as I'm aware. Of. Yeah. So that's the only thing I worry about because I know I've seen it in other areas um, in municipalities where they'll call out, they'll give someone else their shift, and then they pick up that same day overtime shift. Yeah. So is there something that will protect the town from having to pay all those extra costs? I, I see what you're saying, but to me that's more of a, a patrol officer than a lieutenant in an administrative role, a supervisor. I, I don't see that happening from uh, the lieutenant position, someone that's in that role. Uh, I, I see that different than what a, a, the patrol officer may be. I just think where that patrol officer may call sick. Um, day to four shift, however, then there's an opening on the 4 to 12 shift or 3 to 11 shift for overtime and then that person may take it right. but I, I mean I don't I can't speak to the that as far as the patrol officers contract but I, I, I don't have an issue with that not being in the lieutenant's contract just because I look at lieutenant as a uh, administrative role supervisor so I don't expect that to be an issue with that person in that contract, it does give them the opportunity to pick up overtime, though. It is. It yeah. does. Uh, and again, it's if the sergeants are, are not available to take the overtime. But again, I don't. I don't see our lieutenant um, Connell sick and then looking to take an overtime position. I don't see that from this for the, our lieutenant in that position at this time. Okay. So that's why I say I'm okay with it not being in there. Uh, again, for someone that's in a, a 
administrative role and also a leader in the department, but also a role model for the department, for the sergeants and the officers. So I don't, I don't see that. I don't have an issue with it. I can't speak to I, yeah, it. I don't even know if it, it could be in their policies and procedures. I, I can't speak to theirs, yeah. but I just, I'm just speaking to what. So this is just for that one person? That is just for the lieutenant. That's it. Yeah. Okay. That was a contract between the town and him. contract was through negotiations uh, we negotiated back and forth um, from what we wanted and he negotiated on to what he wanted right, so. thinking is just looking at like the position so not so much who's in that position but what the position holds but you're looking at more as who's in that position and that he won't do those certain things but right the contract is with him it's not okay. with the position it's with him okay. you want me to make a motion Sure. I, like I think I already made the motion, and then we were just discussing. Yes, yeah. we did. <laughs> okay. So I'll second. Like it. Well, okay. So there's no further discussion after that. I don't think so. I think those were my only questions on it. Okay. Just on um, how to protect the town, I guess, um, from extra costs. Okay. Very yeah. good points. Yep. Yeah. All right. If there's no other discussion, all in favor of approving the lieutenant's contract? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Sign the sewer commitment, commitment number 22 dash 2. Read it. Okay. So the sewer use fee warrant number 22 dash 2 to Nicole A. Menard, agent for collection of sewer use fees for Granby in the county of Hampshire. In the name of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, you are hereby required to collect from the several persons named on the sewer use fee list herewith committed to you as therein set forth with interest the sum total of such a list being $116,340.15 the whole amount billed to all persons known to us to be liable for sewer use fees and you are to pay over said sewer use fees in interest to Stephen R. Nally treasurer of the town of Granby or to his successor in office at the times and in the manner provided by General Laws Chapter 83, given under our hands this seventh day of June 2022. So that allows us to collect the sewer fees. Do you have a motion? I will make a motion to accept the sewer use fee warrant number 2020 dash, or 2022-2. Second. 22-2. 22-2. Did I say 2-22? Yes. 
Any further discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Cool. There's three copies of that. This oh. I should have went to the arrow, right? Oh, yeah, just follow those yellow tabs. One was the phone off, it should be good. I'm checking on it's the second tab. There is. Yeah. Kathy, show us a signature tab. Mm -hmm. I said money. Lucky Chris was here to rectify that. <laughs> the fourth paper down, the third one. I'd like to delay the discussion on the survey questions. Okay. We originally, I originally scheduled an executive session for 6.30. It's now almost 7 o'clock. Seven, okay. Nope. Um, so I'd like to be able to postpone that to June 21st meeting and then be able to go into executive session because we do have labor council. No, that, that's waiting. fine in, in respect to our labor, labor council meeting. I agree. All right. Well, with that said, does anybody have, have anything else for our meeting at this point? When is the Council on Aging Director done? That'll be done. We'll do that. At, I'll bring it forward to the next, next meeting, meeting and we'll discuss it at that. Right, but when um, are we not are we not losing the director though? Like when is her contract done? Right? She says, well, what, she isn't under contract. Okay. But she has indicated she'll work through December 31st. First. Oh, okay. So we have a little time. Yes. Okay. Yep. <laughs> No, she was leaving, sir. No. So we're going to move into executive session under uh, Mass Law 30A-21-A, uh, Section 3, 30A-21-A, uh, Number 7. And number 3 is to discuss litigation, and Number 7 is to discuss a topic covered by HIPAA. This time I'll take the... Uh, Roll call vote, but we'll only come out of uh, session to adjourn. So this time, roll call vote. Sexton, aye. Aye. Billy, aye. Right. Last name. Two friends. Oh, two two friends, aye. Yes. Perfect. All right. There we go. All set.